If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. Isn't that good? It never gets old, right? My chains were anger, anxiety, and depression. And I'm so grateful that Jesus loved me, that he saved me, that he took my anger, anxiety, and depression, and he turned them into his testimony. He takes our tragedy, he turns them into his testimony, our, our junk, he turns it, and he restores us. And So my name is Cam. I'm just such a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. And uh, we get to start the year the way that we should, going through the steps, going through, uh, you know, the, 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 each and every principle and seeing how we can apply God's word into our lives and into the steps and see what we can do to to live our best life, right? And that's what really we're going to be looking at this entire year is how we can take these things and give us ourselves the ultimate freedom and living our best life. So we're going to talk about lesson one tonight, which is denial. That's principle one, which says, realize I'm not God. I admit that I am powerless to control my tendency to do the wrong thing and that my life is unmanageable. And then step one, we admitted we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors that our lives had become unmanageable. So tonight we begin that journey. And whether this is your 10th time through the journey or whether it's your first time, we get to go through the journey. And, I, you know, last year caught me off guard because I didn't expect to probably uh, uh, put out a few things that I needed to change and needed to work on in my own life on, and fast track. And, and it didn't expect that those things would be such revealed in such uh, a light that they were. But I'm glad, glad that they were. And I'm glad that I had the steps and the principles. So we're going to talk about denial and I'm going to ask you a couple questions here um, as we get started. And, and I just want to apply this to things in your life. And as you perhaps as you've been like myself, reflecting in the new year, reflecting on, on things. Is there anything in your past that is preventing you from taking this journey? What is it or is there anything that you can think of that is uh, prohibiting you that is just standing as a roadblock for you to, to, to take this journey of recovery? And then, then let me ask you, are you afraid to change? Is there anything that is bringing, I was listening on the way here about, about fear and why we don't change. And is there anything that's, that's causing you fear to not want to change? And what are those fears? So we're going to talk about some of these things tonight. These are the questions that we have to ask as we talk about denial, as we look ourselves in the, in the mirror, which sometimes is a hard thing to do. You know, we do it very casually every day, but to really, you know, for, for getting dressed and getting ready for the day, but to really look at ourselves and look inside and see the things that maybe we have that are roadblocks that are that are pre preventing our relationships with others and our family and and just the change that god needs so uh hebrews 12 1 good verse to start off with says, says since we have such a huge crowd of men of faith watching from the grandstands let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back listen to that let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and trip us up and let us run with patience the race that God has set before us. So this is about taking a look at those things that are holding us back from that life that, that God has designed for us and planned for us. First of all, I need you to know that God has a unique plan for each and every one of us. Doesn't matter what you've been through, doesn't matter what your, your past is, doesn't matter what your history is. God has a specific, unique, individual plan specifically for you. He has a specific plan for me. The plan for me is only the plan that I can fulfill. The plan for you is the only plan that you can fulfill. It is specific. It's designed. It's created just for you. And the second thing is that we need to be willing to get rid of any of the unnecessary baggage, the past failures in our lives that keep us from fulfilling that plan, that keep us from being stuck and moving forward in that freedom that God designed for us. You know, a lot of our hurts, habits, and hangups have held us back. They even cloud our perspective. They cloud, like these lenses. I, I got new lenses here with the new year and, and got some, some new prescription because each year that changes a little bit. It gets a little bit worse, you know, as I get older. But some of our lenses have, have shaped the way that we see life. They've shaped the way that we see things in our lives. And we need to, to be willing to check those lenses and see if our prescription needs to be fixed. If our prescription needs to be adjusted, just like that, that eye doctor, he kept adjusting those dials. He said, you see, he showed me last year's prescription. Then he showed me this year's prescription. I said, yeah, it's better. We had to adjust the dial a little bit. And some of us need to do those things. There are many ways we've all been hurt. Maybe it's through abuses as a child, through, through our early years. Maybe it's through a relationship. 
Maybe it's through adultery. Maybe it's through, maybe it's through the church. That was my thing. I got hurt through the church. That really caused my deep wounds. Many people are like that. They've, they've been offended. They've been hurt. They've been wounded from the church, from our family, from sibling rivalries, from death of a loved one, from conflict over inheritance. I mean, we could go on and on and on. There's so many things that, that um, you know, have hurt us. And, and certainly, I, I have my own hurts. I've had my own journey that I've gone through. And your journey is different than my journey. So, so I empathize and I sympathize with you for your journey. But we all have hurts. We each and every one of us have hurts and we have things that we have from in our past that, that have just, that have created that lens of that have shaped that perspective that we have. But holding on to that hurt and not being willing to forgive the person or the circumstances that has hurt you in the past is allowing them to continue to hurt you today. So that, that hurt from way back when, maybe it's just a, a, a few years ago or maybe it's decades ago. I, you, you probably know people like I, like myself that had held on to things for, from way back when. And it's like, wow, that, why, why, as I evaluated, why is that? And, and looking back, that it was from way back in the past. And so we all know people, and we, some of us that's describing ourselves, that are, are letting things in the past hold us back and continue to hurt them. But, but in, in doing so, we've, we continue to give that situation, that circumstance, power and position in our lives. Working a Christ Center program uh, like CR will, will, with God's power, allow you to find the courage and the strength to face your hurts, face your habits, and face your hang-ups with God's help. Forgive those who have wronged, wronged you. I need to let you know you don't have to forgive them tonight. I mean, it'd be great tonight to walk out that door set free, right? But this is a process. This is a journey. And, and just this is a step one in, in looking at, at that situation and those that have have brought hurt in your lives and, and being able to bring yourself one step closer to forgiving them. If you've been bound by guilt uh, and keep beating yourself up over past failures, sounds like that I'm talking about myself. You think that no one anywhere is as bad as you are or has done the things that you've done and that no one can love you, the real you, the way that you are. That's another thing that we can again begin to look at and to address and begin to forgive, uh, forgive ourselves. And if you think that you can't get past those things, you're wrong. God can, God can get you past those things. God can forgive you of those things. God can help you get, move on, and he can help you move and take a step towards the freedom that he designed you for. And if you look around tonight, this is a room full of people that have been in some of the situations that you've been in. This is a room full of people that have been, so each and every one of us that are at a different point in our life. We're at a different part of our journey. And some have experienced freedom. Some may be still be holding on to things that, that are prohibiting them, that are, that are not enabling them to, to, to move forward. The bottom line is if you want freedom from your past habits, hang-ups, and hurts, you need to deal with your past and everything that comes with it. All the good, all the bad, all the ugly. The bitterness, the shame, the guilt, once and for all. And that's what we're going to uh, we're going to do. Isaiah 43, 18 tells us, forget the former things. Don't dwell on them. That doesn't mean ignore the past. You need to learn from your past. Offer forgiveness, make amends, and then release it. And then only you can be free from your guilt, grief, and grudges. You know, God isn't interested in how we started. He's interested in our finish. We, our start may have been a little bumpy. It may have been a little choppy. It may have been a little rough. But God's not interested in that. In fact, this book is full of men and women that had a rough start. That, that God used, God didn't use, you know, he didn't come down to this earth and he didn't, he didn't head to the nearest, you know, doctor's office and lawyer's office and get the most prestigious. He didn't head to the government officials to get all the most uh, prestigious people and the most highest uh, in society. No, he went to the lowest. He went to the fishermen. He went to the, the coarse talking, the dirty joke telling, the filthy mouth fishermen. And he used them and he called them and he said, hey, Matthew, hey, Simon. And he called them by name. He says, I've chosen you. He went to them and looked through all the history of the, the, of the Bible. God chose murderers. He chose those that, that were uh, immoral. He chose those that were ungodly. He chose Samson, the womanizer. He chose David, the adulterer. He chose, uh, he chose Moses, the murderer. He chose all of them to, to fulfill his plan. And God has a specific and unique plan for each and every one of you. Perhaps you fear the future. You may be, be in hurt 
uh, and, and uh, your, this habit, hurt, and hang-up that you have may be shaping your identity and who you are. And so it may cause a little bit of a panic for the future. Again, this is, this is something that we, we can exactly, uh, we can take a look at as we look at denial. Denial has been defined as a false system of beliefs that are not based on reality. A, prote- a self-protecting behavior that keeps us from honestly uh, facing the truth. You know, in the past, probably as a kid, you know, uh, denial really served us well. You know, as far as um, our, our, our coping behaviors that we learned as kids, uh, it served us pretty well. We use that, you know, as, as kids to, 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 to uh, you know, shape our perception of the world. And But as we got older and as, we, as the years pr- progressed, they confused and clouded our view uh, of, of you know you know after we didn't get the attention that we did as a kid and, and all that and it confused and, and you know clouded our perspective and our perception of our, ourselves our expectations our relationships and eventually that those coping skills that we learned as a kid turned into denial denial of the situation most of us can probably think of maybe some things that we were in denial about as far as maybe our parents' relationship or maybe something about ourselves that we, we were in denial about. It's kind of like uh, the family gathering when you know, you've got the elephant in the room and no one wants to talk about. That's what denial is. That's really what it is. Does any of this uh, resonate with, with you guys tonight? I mean, it, it's, it's really a story of a lot of us, right? So denial, at the sheets that you have in your hand uh, spells out denial. We've got acrostic as we do each and every week in uh, CR. And we've got D-E-N-I-A-L. And the D is for disables our feelings. Disables our feelings. Hiding our feelings, living in denial, freezes our emotions and binds us. Understanding our feelings, uh, understanding and find, feeling our feelings is where we find freedom. Our verse for that is 2 Peter 2, 9. And that says, they promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of destructive habits. For we are slaves of anything that has conquered us. That's what 2 Peter 2, 19 says. We find freedom from our true feelings when we keep Christ and step, uh, when we find Christ and step out of denial. The E stands for energy lost. Energy lost. Anxiety is a major side effect of denial, causing us to waste Precious energy in time. Do you know worrying about the past and dreading the future, future makes us unable to live and enjoy God's plan for our lives? Psalms 146.7 says, He frees the prisoners. He lifts the burdens from those bent down uh, beneath their loads. Do you know it takes more energy to maintain your denial than it does to simply trust God? Mm. It really does. The N means negates growth negates growth we cannot grow and recover until we are ready to step out of our denial into the truth you are not alone god is wanting to take your hand and bring you out you're not alone in this journey this is not something that you do on your own that uh, good luck best best wishes to you no you you have your your accountability partner you have and we're going to talk about all those things as we go through the steps. You have your, your sphere of influence and your accountability partner, your sponsor, and you have your CR family. And that's all of us here tonight. Uh, help me uh, finish this statement. You, I think you guys know this. God never wastes a hurt. hurt. He never wastes a hurt. Psalm 107, 13. They cried to the Lord in their troubles and he rescued them. What a good verse, man. What a verse to just to use in all that's going on in today's world. Uh, denial, I, isolates us from God. Isolates us. Just like Adam and Eve did, remember? When they were, when they, after they sinned, they were isolated and it separated from God. Genesis 3, 7 uh, tells us that. God shines a light, uh, his light on our truth. Our denial keeps us in the dark. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we, claim we have no, if we claim to have fellowship with him, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. That's 1 John 5 through 7. Denial isolates us from God and A, alienates us in our relationships. Denial only temporarily shields us from hurt. It keeps us from helping others 
uh, ourselves or those that love us the most. I think sometimes by doing this, we think that we can, um, you know, we can shield ourselves and we can hide from others. Mm. But we end up really just hurting, hurting ourselves and hurting the relationship that we're trying to, to protect that, that, that light being shined, just like we said, being shown up on us. It is always better to tell the ugly truth than a beautiful lie. It's always better to, to let that light shine on us and, and just reveal that ugliness rather than to try to spin that perfect lie because we know how hard it is to, to maintain that, right? We've all been there in that. Uh, the L is for denial lengthens the pain. It lengthens the pain. Denial does not protect you from pain. It only defers it. And it allows pain a, a place to fester and grow, turning into shame, uh, turning shame into guilt and extending your hurt. It actually multiplies your problems. It actually multiplies. We think that that it, it's just deferring and that it, we can we can you know deflect it and we can just push it to the side. No, it's actually each time we do that, it multiplies our problems. Truth like surgery may hurt us for a while, but it cures. God's promise. Uh, God promises us in Jeremiah 30, 17, I will give you back your health again and heal your wounds. Such a good verse, Jeremiah 30, 17. I hope you have that one down. I think it's referenced in your lesson there or in your notes. So tonight I encourage you to step out of your denial. Walking out of your denial isn't easy, right? It's not, not easy to, to look in the mirror and say, hey, I need to really fix this. Not easy for me to look and say, Cam, you've got to change. That's hard to do. That's hard to, it's hard when someone points that out. But you know, it's easier when we bring those things to God and say, God, reveal that to me. And so that's what we need to do this year is whether you've been through this a, a few times or, or this is your first time, we need to ask God. You know, last year I wasn't even asking God for, for you know, I, probably the same that I normally do. God, you know, reveal the things. But I, I probably was maybe higher, higher level. And boy, 2020 hit in, you know, March, April. I started getting some, seeing some things in me and the light started getting shown on some things that were, that were hard that I didn't realize that I was going to have to, to really take a look at and work through those steps and work through again, just like I had in the past for the anger, the anxiety, and depression. You know, the good thing is, is, you know, we're, we're all wearing masks, but th this mask is the mask that we want to take off, right? This is the mask that we need to take off. You're in a safe place. You're around a, uh, an environment of, of safety. And this is a place to do it. This is a place to expose those things to the light. Here you have people who care about you, who love you for who you are, and people who stand behind you as truth becomes a way of life. And the verse I'll finish up with is John 8, 32. Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So step out of your denial so you can step into Jesus' unconditional love and grace and begin your healing journey of recovery. That is uh, John 8, 32. John 8, 32. So I hope you guys got something out of that tonight. I hope that that was, was helpful to you. John 8, 32. N was negates. L-O-S-T. Negate what, brother? L-O-S-T. So that's what it is.